Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about the sacred calendar. We got a comment from a viewer, Jungle Ship Entertainment, was asking which month we're in. He's talking about how some channels and websites are saying that we are in the fifth month, while others are saying that we are in the sixth month, and he's questioning what exact month are we in. So the purpose of this video is to not only show what month we're in currently, but to show you how to know when the months fall on the sacred calendar. Now, when it comes to the sacred calendar, we have to rely on scripture to get an understanding of that calendar. Now, the first place you heard about the calendar is over in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14, which says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So here are the elements of our father's timepiece. His sacred calendar is made up of the lights in the firmament which are the sun, the moon, and the stars. But you can imagine somebody there with this verse in hand, sitting there looking up at the lights in the firmament, trying to figure out what month we're in. Well, in order to understand how to use the lights of the firmament to know what month we're in, we have to come over to the book of Enoch. In chapter 71 of the book of Enoch, or chapter 72, depending on the translation that you use, you find the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. This is the book where Uriel, that Elohim, that we read about in Genesis chapter 5, that was walking with Enoch, taught Enoch about the revolutions of the luminaries, taught him their respective classes, powers, periods, names, places, and their respective months. So we'll use this information to understand what month we're in. Now, you can imagine there are laws that govern those lights in the firmament. And the first law of the luminaries we find in verse 2 of the book of Enoch, chapter 71. And it says, this is the first law of the luminaries. The sun and the light arrive at the gates of heaven, which are on the east and on the west of it at the western gates of heaven. So the first law of the luminary is that the sun and its light arrive at the western gates of heaven. But now, as far as this video is concerned, what we really need to understand here are these gates that he's talking about. Because these gates, which represent the stars also tell us what season or what time we're in now since we're concentrating on which month we're in let's drop down to verse 9 which is talking about the first month if we know when the first month was then we'll know which month we're in now but what you notice in verse 10 is that in the first solar month the sun enters the fourth gate. Now that's going to confuse somebody that the year doesn't start with the sun in the first gate, but it starts with the sun in the fourth gate. And notice in verse 11 that is talking about the moon. Even though this law pertains to the sun, since we're talking about months, we're going to need the witness of the moon. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So Let's drop down to verse 12, where we see that the sun remains in the fourth gate for 30 days. And then in verse 15, we see that from the fourth gate, it goes to the fifth gate where it remains for 30 days. And then notice in verse 17 that after the fifth gate, the sun goes to the sixth gate where it stays for 31 days. So you have 30, 30, then 31 days. But notice in verse 20 that the sun remains in the sixth gate after those 31 days are up. So it spends two periods of time in the sixth gate. So you have month one being in gate four, month two being in gate five, 
The third solar month would be in gate six, but the fourth solar month will also be when the sun is in gate six. And the fifth solar month, we see there in verse 22, the sun goes from the sixth gate back to the fifth gate, where it stays there for 30 days. And in verse 24, the sun goes from the fifth gate to the fourth gate. And in verse 26, it goes to the third gate where it stays there for 30 mornings. And then in verse 28, you see the sun going from the third gate to the second gate. And again, it tells you that it does so after 30 days. In verse 31, you see the sun goes from the second to the first gate where it stays for 31 days. And then in verse 35, you see that it spends two periods in the first gate like it did in the sixth gate. With the second period being for only 30 days instead of 31 days. And after that, you see in verse 39 that it goes from the first gate back to the second gate. Where it stays for 30 days. And then in verse 41, you see it goes from the second gate to the third gate. And this would actually be the 12th solar month, ending with this 31 day period in gate three. So when you plot out all of that information from those gates pertaining to the month, it looks like this. Turns out the movement of a clock is very similar to the movement of the moon, the stars and the sun as far as our father's sacred calendar is concerned. The hour hand would represent the sun and it would go through all 12 positions over the course of a year where the minute hand would be represented by the moon and it goes through all 12 of those positions in 29.53 days. And of course, the numbers on the clock would be the representation of the sun in relationship to the stars. So if we're putting the information from the gates on the face of a clock, it would look like this where you have this hour hand being the representation of the sun and it will make its course around the face of this clock or this calendar over the course of a year. But notice how as it goes through each one of these months that it's actually also going through each one of these gates, hitting each gate two times in a year. But let me show you where these dates come from. When you're looking back at the book of Enoch in verse 42, it says at that period, the night becomes shortened. It is nine parts and the night is equal with the day. The year is precisely 364 days. Now, this is how the father's sacred calendar is calibrated. This is how you get those dates that you see over on the image. We saw here that it's talking about the 12th month and it's saying that the end of the 12th month or the 364th day is when the nights and the days become equal. So this is what the commoner was talking about when he was asking if the months are determined by the equinox. This is what Enoch is talking about in verse 42 when he says that the night is equal with the day on this 364th day. So what Enoch is telling us is that the 364th day or the last day of the year falls when the days and the nights are equal, which is preceded by the equinox. March 20th is actually called the first day of spring. And that was the day that Enoch was talking about that the sun enters the first solar month is when the days start to become longer than the nights. So 
to put all of that together, the last day of the year is when the days and the nights are equal. And then the next day, March the 20th, is the first day of the solar year. But notice that I'm saying solar year. And we know that the sacred calendar is a solar lunar calendar. So we're actually missing one of the elements on our timepiece. I mean, we have the position of the sun in relationship to the gates or the stars that tell us what solar month we're in, but the moon is not represented on this diagram at all. And for that information, we have to come to the next chapter, 72 of the book of Enoch, to hear about the second law of the luminaries. Verse 1 says, After this law, I beheld another law of an inferior luminary, the name of which is the moon, and the orb of which is as the orb of heaven. So, whereas chapter 71 was talking all about the stars and the relationship to the sun here we're going to see how the moon plays a part in the sacred calendar now when you read this chapter you'll notice that when we were talking about the sun we were talking pretty much about gates but now that we're talking about the moon it's talking more about months well we see from these verses that the beginning of the month is when the moon appears Verse 5 says, at the time it appears and becomes to you the beginning of the month. So this is telling us that the new moon or the sighting of the new moon is the head of the month. Now, this is not surprising to anybody who has examined the scriptures when it's talking about the new moon. Like, for instance, Psalm chapter 81 and verse 3 which is talking about blowing the trumpets in the new moon. Well, when we click on the Strong's number 2320 that corresponds to new moon, we see that it also means a month. And when we look at the other times 2320 or Kodesh is used in the Bible, we see that it's interchangeable between the moon and the month. So in other words, Every time you see the word Kodesh or moon or new moon in the Bible, you see that it's actually talking about a new month. Every sacred month begins with a new moon. Well, that's what we're learning over here in the book of Enoch, explaining that the sacred month begins with the new moon. So when we're looking back at our illustration of the sacred calendar, what this means is that we have to have the representation of both the sun, the stars, and the moon. And what Enoch is telling us is when the moon and the sun converge, creating the new moon is when we will get a new month. That's the major difference between how a clock works and how the sacred calendar works. We talked about how the moon is represented by the minute hand. Well, on a clock, when the minute hand reaches the top position or the 12 o'clock position is when a new hour starts. Well, that's different than the sacred calendar because on the sacred calendar, the minute hand, which is represented by the moon and the hour hand, which is a representation of the sun, have to converge. So, whereas when the minute hand was at 12 o'clock we get a new hour it is when the sun and the moon converge in that particular gate do we get a new month so what this means is that even though we enter the fifth gate on july the 19th i should say the sun entered the fifth gate on july the 19th we actually have to wait for the convergence of the moon in order to get a new month. So starting over here on about March the 20th, with the beginning of the solar month, we had to wait for the moon to get the sacred month, which fell on or about April the 11th. So... It was on that date when we had the new moon, April the 11th for April the 12th, 
is when we had the convergence of the sun, the moon, and the stars, giving us the first month of the year. Well, the sun then entered the fifth gate on April the 19th, but we had to wait for the moon or the new moon on about May the 11th before we entered the second month. And that's the way it works every month. The sun entered its sixth gate on May the 19th, but then we didn't get a new moon until about June the 10th, starting the third month. And then the new moon that fell after June the 19th started the fourth month, and the sun entered the fifth gate on July the 19th, but we didn't get a new moon until August the 9th, which started the fifth month. So we're actually in the fifth month. Now, you say, well, what's the problem? Why are there those who think we're in the sixth month? Well, one key element here is that the sun enters the fourth gate after March the 19th. But you see that the Jewish community declared the new moon that fell on about March the 13th as the first day of Nisan or the first day of the year. So that's why they are actually a month early. That new moon fell on or about March the 13th, but that's clearly before the spring equinox, which is March the 20th. So they counted what should have been the 13th month in the year 2021 as the first month. And that's why they believe that we are in the sixth month now. It all goes back to this 364th day that Enoch is talking about. You may have heard a lot of people talking about the Hebrew calendar, but you've never heard them talk about the 364th day or the calendar being 364 days long. Well, we learn from Moses in the book of Jubilees in chapter six, that by not keeping up with this 364th day, this calibration day of the sacred calendar, the calendar would drift and we would lose the reckoning of the years, the months, the days, the Sabbath and the feast days. Well, that's what we're seeing here. That's what's wrong with the Jewish calendar is they're not keeping up with the 364th day. And that's why in the year 2021, they don't know what month we're in. And they're actually celebrating their feast days a month too early. The first month always starts after March the 19th or after the spring equinox around March the 20th. Never will the sacred calendar's first month fall before March the 19th. And if you use the 364th day calibration period, you don't have to worry about that because he resets the calendar every year, putting the first month in the fourth gate. Then all you have to do is wait for the convergence of the moon in that same gate and you will know exactly what month you're in. So here in August the 11th, we know that we are in the fifth gate and the fifth month. And it will be the new moon after August the 18th that will put us in the sixth month on the sacred calendar. Now, looking at this old sundial, we can see how all of this works. Now, looking close here, we don't have them marked out too heavily, but you can start to see these gates that we have on our sundial. Um, these are the same gates that we were reading about in Enoch. All we did was wait it to the position of the sun or the shadow being cast. And then we put a little dot there um, uh, throughout the day to make uh, the line, the actual line that was being cast by the sun. Well, when you come over here, you see the shadow of the sun being cast in this particular gate right here. So like we were talking, you have the fourth gate right here, then you have the fifth gate right here, and then it goes into the sixth gate where it stays for two months, and then it goes back into the fifth gate. Well, that's where you see us at here 
in the fifth gate. So we're, and we just had a new moon on August the 9th. We entered this fifth gate back in July, and then we got a new moon on August the 9th. So that means um, that we are actually in the fifth month. And so this is how, you know, they told Tom throughout history, they use sundials. Um, and so what you do is when you have a sundial like this is you calibrate it to the equinox if you don't want to use trigonometry you can use mathematics um, and set it according to the degrees of your longitude and latitude or whatever or you could just set it to the um, to the equinox and then from then on you'll be able to understand what position the Sun is in and if you have some lines like we do then you can know which gate we're in and then you can know which month we're in and you know that's how they've done it even all the way back to the days of Enoch and when we come back out later in the day we see the Sun is still transversing at that same gate that's the way it'll do for all 30 days is it'll stay within that gate and so all we have to do is wait for the new moon that falls when the Sun is in that gate and that's how we know what month we're in so I hope this clears everything up as far as the months are concerned. If it doesn't, please add your questions or comments down in the comment section below. And if you would, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom.